Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the webcast, How to Modernize Your Performance Management for 2018, sponsored by A-Team and presented by Zorian Rotenberg. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that this webcast has been pre-approved for HRCI credit and can also be used for SHRM credit. Please be sure to attend the complete webcast in order to receive your credits. After the webcast, you will receive an email from HR.com within one to two business days. It will include the certification credit information. You can also log in to HR.com and go to your View My Credits page where you can see the credits that you have received. If you have any questions today for our presenter or for HR.com, please type them into the questions tab on your GoToWebinar control panel and we will follow up with you. And now it's my pleasure to turn it over to our presenter, Zorian Rotenberg. Kathy, thank you so much for introducing me um, and appreciate everyone joining us today. Uh, the webinar is about how to modernize your performance management. And uh, as a subtitle, it's very much about attaining a really great employee experience, which we know is, is a very important uh, and pretty impactful um, subject matter today. Uh, and ultimately, with that comes higher performance and higher um, and stellar results at your company uh, through a far more effective uh, and the correctly done performance management. And uh, on this webinar, we'll talk about a bunch of different things. Just a little bit about myself before we get started. Um, you don't even need to read all this. Uh, I guess all I want to say is I run this company. I founded it with a ton of passion for uh, managing. Uh, people and companies more effectively, the old school legacy outdated performance management that I've seen in the past uh, has not worked. And I'll introduce to you today a lot of statistics about why it hasn't from all different sources out there with experts and global analysts uh, that have shown that uh, existing legacy performance management practices are actually hurting your company. Um, and I've spoken at a number of conferences on uh, on topics of managing uh, companies and teams effectively. So I'll bring all of that knowledge into the conversation today. On our agenda, we'll cover what is performance management. I think there are a lot of different uh, variants of how folks define it, depending on your uh, role at the company and your experience. So let's define it the, uh, the correct way. And I think one of the correct ways will come right from Wikipedia, but I will emphasize a couple of things for you. We'll talk about the history and the story of traditional uh, or let me cross that out and say, honestly, legacy is a better word. Uh, the legacy style performance management. Um, and then talk about what is the modern continuous approach and the right way to do it. Because there's still a lot of confusion about the right way that it's done. And, and I'll hopefully boil it down for you so you'll take away some message here that's, uh, that's interesting and, and educational and hopefully edifying uh, as well. So let's get started. What is performance management? You know, what I really like to uh, go to, one of my uh, best sort of insight, most insightful sources is uh, Josh Burson and his group that was acquired by Deloitte. Uh, they're global experts uh, on uh, all things human capital management, human capital management, uh, you know, leading edge trends, um, and really uh, looking ahead for what makes your company better, what makes HR more strategic and more effective. And uh, I love how uh, Burson uh, Group de defined performance management. Uh, of course, they talk about employee performance management as a set of management practices that there's a couple of bullet points. The first one is, uh, is all about establishing measurable goals and objectives for employees. Very true. You cannot have performance management unless at the tip of the spear, your managers have set goals and objectives for employees, right? So if you don't have the practice of goal setting, you'll see this as a recurring theme. You simply don't have performance management, period, right? And the takeaway at the bottom of the slide is really just performance management is management. After all, if you're not managing towards a specific level of performance, well, what are you doing then? <laughs> what is the purpose of performance management in the first place if you're not using it to manage uh, people or your human capital more effectively? And then Wikipedia very similarly defines, you know, at the tip of the spear, ensuring, uh, you know, performance management includes activities which ensure that goals 
are consistently being met, right? And in effective and efficient manner. By the way, the concepts of effective and efficient are slightly different. And, uh, uh, you know, effective is, I think Peter Drucker defined as, you know, are we doing the right things? And efficient, you know, are we doing things right? And uh, the legacy performance management, the traditional legacy performance management, uh, that's really, um, it's actually very ineffective and extremely inefficient. But with a light sort of sense of humor sprinkled into the conversation, I will prove to you that the legacy performance management is actually extremely effective, extremely effective at one thing, which is being quite destructive to your company, to your employee experience and to your performance and results. And there's data to prove how effective it is at hurting your organization, uh, which is why you wanna avoid that. And finally, again, Wikipedia says, you know, process by which your organizations align, resources absolutely align um, to strategic objectives, right? Um, because ultimately driving performance with HR's assistance uh, and doing performance management is indeed all about getting your people to perform towards the goals that are strategically important to your organization. So as you will see this kind of overarching theme, right, and the underlying foundation really across uh, the modern performance management uh, method is just all about getting everyone in the organization aligned and making sure that it's it's really a strategic process not a uh you know not some process simply done for the purposes of compliance with the law so that you know somebody's let go at your company uh you have the uh, the performance appraisal and you're compliant that is extremely old school um and while some of it is still important right um, that is not at all the purpose of, of the modern and correct performance management. And, and otherwise, if you don't do it that way, it won't help your organization. But let's look at history and how has this legacy approach, how has it been, been done in the past 100 plus years? I don't think I want to read all of this, uh, you, know, uh, you know, bullet by bullet to you. You can obviously read it. And uh, we can also send you this presentation uh, you can grab it from hr.com or you can email us uh, today after the webinar and we'll send it to you, um, you know, Im immediately within uh, within an hour or so. But, you know, the bottom line is even from uh, the late 19th century, you know, from 1880s um, and, and early uh, 20th century from World War I and World War II, from the practices of the U.S. military, the, the rating system to dismiss uh, poor performers in the army, right? That same system has been carried over and is pretty much uh, the one that is incorrectly still applied today, to which I do refer as legacy performance management. Um, and it's incorrect and it doesn't work. And there's statistics we will talk to, about today that, that prove that. Um, but in the uh, 2010s, this emerging new practice and movement um, started uh, taking on a lot of interest. Um, and as a result, it actually was started uh, by McKinsey's study uh, in the 1990s and 2000s that took probably a decade or so to really get out and become, um, you know, well-tested and uh, has become a, a popular, uh, popular mode of uh, HR practice uh, at a lot of companies, and a lot of companies today that are implementing it are doing it because they are completely, they're acknowledging that uh, what's what they're doing right, right now is just not working and it's hurting the company. Uh, and this study by McKinsey, you know, the leading consulting, uh, management consulting organization globally has determined um, that the emphasis of performance management should be about uh, developing your talent, and improving performance uh, and what today we kind of overarchingly refer to as employee experience, right? It's not just about your culture or anything. It's about, you know, the employee experience of working effectively at your organization, delivering results and also doing it in a way uh, that's in engaging to the employees so that uh, the A players that you want, you can retain them uh, and they will be more satisfied working at your organization rather than anywhere else. 
So there were a lot of books in the past, uh, I would say, decade plus written about the legacy performance management that just doesn't work. You know, books like Abolishing Performance Appraisals, Why They Backfire and What to Do Instead, uh, one called The End of Performance Review, and there's a bunch of others. These are some of the most popular ones. Uh, Harvard Business Review, uh, and you know, they, they write a lot of very interesting research um, that's truly hands-on, that is embraced by the leading executives globally, um, and top HR leaders very much pay attention to articles uh, in HBR specifically relating to HR or, you know, the, the, the new sort of naming convention for the HR role today, uh, which is called, you know, people operations, right? That was actually, you know, I'm digressing, but that was, you know, kind of, I think, or either introduced or made popular by uh, the former VP at Google, Laszlo Bach, uh, who in his book, uh, Work Rules, and I highly recommend this book, fantastic book. It's just like it's all the secrets from Google for how to run, you know, and manage and, and, and recruit people well and manage people effectively, et cetera. And, uh, you know, he had a whole section in that book about why he took on the title people operations versus HR. And I found that extremely interesting, but that is really all about the modern HR best practices, that it's about people, it's about operations um, and, and people management and, and improving um, the employee experience and, and achieving high level of performance and results, not about doing the old school legacy outdated things that are killing and hurting companies that you know most HR leaders have already uh, been starting to transition away from as quickly as possible. And it's a big, big thing in HR. So a lot of you may have heard of Adobe uh, and especially Donna Morris, who's a leading um, executive uh, focused on people, you know, people, people operations. As you can see, her title is Senior Vice President of People or People in Places, but people, not HR. Again, that's the modern variant of the HR title. Um, and it speaks to the fact that, you know, as I just mentioned, it's all about improving, you know, people and their performance and their experience, not about just, you know, doing the legacy things the old school way. And Adobe made the, the process of getting rid of annual performance reviews really uh, well understood and popular. And Donna Morris has been a, a fantastic a thought leader and speaker at a lot of HR related conferences globally. And it was this that when Adobe did this like in early 2000s, like before anyone else even um, registered this, right? This huge, um, just gigantic transition from the old to the new. And um, she's been talking about it a lot. And this was, um, this is what started, I think, for a lot of companies, this kind of like wow effect that, well, hey, if Adobe is doing this and they're a public company with a lot of employees, there's something here. And Adobe has calculated that the annual process, this old school process that they were doing, and when I tell you the annual old school process, what I'm really referring to is this like once a year annual review uh, that's typically completely biased, outdated, because it doesn't really capture the full capacity over a year. It's just there's all these like psychological biases that are well known and studied and have been documented, like the recency bias, et cetera, et cetera. You can obviously find that online, but um, and even on our own blog, we had that um, written about some time ago. But you know, they spent you know for the annual review, they just would get all the managers together and hey, you know, give us notes on each one of your employees um, for the past year. And they, it's ridiculous. They would spend eighty thousand hours uh, from its two thousand managers, forty hours per manager, right, to do this. It, it's and it's ridiculous because. We're going to look right now and see how extremely ineffective this whole process is. Uh, and Deloitte, by the way, they're a bigger organization uh, and they're a thought leader on this uh, subject matter in itself, right? But they actually um, themselves studied how, how many hours their organization was spending on this outdated practice, which was not only outdated, but super ineffective, didn't really produce any good outcomes or results for them. It took 2 million hours a year. What is 2 million hours? Just like for laughs and giggles, right? What does that mean? Well, it's 50,000 work weeks, uh, which is about 1,000 years for one person. So any of you over there 
who've lived a thousand years or close to it. Raise your hand. Uh, we can't see you. And uh, but it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of years uh, to do this. Um, and, uh, you know, that's uh, that's kind of one full year for a thousand people working on this. It's kind of crazy. Um, it's a lot of time. Wasted. Wasted. I'll prove to you that it's wasted in a minute. Uh, the Washington Post, so we have, you know, this the Deloitte talking about this. Adobe started talking about it. Jeez, I mean, even Washington Post, which is not even like, it's not a publication for HR best practices. How the heck do you have like a, a newspaper in Washington, D.C. that's probably focused more on politics of the United States of America than anything else? Why would they write about performance reviews? Why? Because it's that important, right? It affects everyone, right? It affects not only employees at companies, but it affects you at home, right? Because if you get a, uh, an, an, a performance review at the end of the year that's really ineffective, um, it's done incorrectly, you, you know, everybody's wasting time on it. Um, it's affecting you personally. And, and, you know, Washington Post wrote about it. Like, why are we doing this? You know, this is ridiculous. Um, you know, we're trying to recall something people have accomplished 12 months ago. It makes no sense, right? That's what this whole article is about. So, and that's from Washington uh, Post. But what about anal analysts and consulting organizations that are, you know, they spend, you know, tons of hours and months researching this at a very deep level, serving, analyzing in Excel pivot tables. And like the outcome of all of that is, you know, corporate executive board, which, by the way, was acquired by Gartner. I mean, they're a leader in this kind of stuff. Combined with SHRM, right? I mean, most of you are probably members of SHRM. So, and they say 95% of managers, managers, people who are, who are managing other people and had to submit these notes to HR, they're dissatisfied with their company's performance management process. 95% out of 100 people, 95 are they're totally dissatisfied. They don't like it. By the way, uh, most of the folks here in this webinar are HR professionals. Nine out of 10 of you don't believe your performance management provides accurate information. Nine out of 10 of you, right? And by the way, if of the nine that are feeling this right now and you're going, uh-huh, if you're going, uh-huh, and you are doing it, if you're doing this old school stuff, why are you doing it? You hate it. Right, fifty-eight percent of executives, top executives of any organization, say that the current process just doesn't drive employee engagement or employee experience overarchingly, or higher performance. Right? Why are we doing it? You know, also according to Towers Watson Group, just a couple of years ago, eighty-one percent of employers of companies say, "Look, managers spend way too little time in ongoing conversations with employees." about performance, right? So they're just like spending it at the end of the year. Really? You're taking a whole year to talk to someone about performance? Does that even make any sense? 62% of employers say that managers spend insufficient time helping employees set goals. Really? Like, well, are you just micromanaging employees then if you're not setting objectives for them? Because that's really what it is, right? If you're not setting objectives, you're micromanaging, and that's a very, very bad way to manage. That hits employee experience like completely impactfully, um, and and does not help people produce good results at all. And then 63% of these organizations say that their managers spend four hours or less per employee that they manage on performance management for an entire year, right? with an employee. They're wasting all the time doing the notes for HR at the end of the year, but not actually spending with an employee directly, which is pretty darn bad. So back to Laszlo Bach, I mentioned him earlier. And again, I really recommend his book, Work Rules. Uh, grab it on Amazon. It's fantastic. In fact, I may even offer it as a gift to a few people later, but hey, let's get to that. But performance management, as practiced by most organizations, has become a rule-based bureaucratic process existing as an end in itself rather than actually shaping performance. Employees hate it, managers hate it, even HR departments hate it. That's what the head of all of HR or people ops at Google said. Pretty darn bad. And by the way, according to the Brookings Institute and SHRM, if you're a $100 million company, $70 million of that 
is what you're paying for your workforce. Like all include, all, like fully booked, right? 70% of every dollar in your PL goes towards your people. And if you are man, remember performance management equals management. That's what Deloitte, Burson at Deloitte said, right? Correct. Performance management is management. So if you're just doing bad performance management or therefore bad management of 70% of every dollar of your company, there's something really wrong there, right? That just costs, you're bleeding, right? It's bad. So why are HR leaders transitioning away from this legacy approach that's been, you know, going on for a hundred plus years from, you know, late 1880s and, you know, from World War I and World War II military practices? Look, once a year doesn't work at all. And by the way, let me tell you, every time I hear some HR exec saying, oh, we're doing it twice a year, not once, I start laughing, right? <laughs> You're doing the bad thing twice as much. It's twice as bad. It's not about how frequently you're doing this annual bad practice. It's about redoing it and retooling it entirely. It's not about repeating the bad thing more frequently. That's totally wrong. You're just twice as bad. So and I'll show you later, by the way, how to do it right. But it's not about doing an annual performance review uh, twice a year at all or, or more. Um, just keep, you know, either don't do it at all, but don't do it even once or twice if you're not going to actually switch over and doing it correctly in the first place. Listen, you're, it's also not focused on forward-focused goal setting. It's always backward-looking, way backward, right? Um, not agile, in other words. It's not focused on regular, weekly, or bi-monthly, you know, quick check-ins. Quick check-in between a manager and employee, which plays its part in the modern performance management, right? It's not focused on actually improving performance and sure, sure as heck not on a better employee experience over our channel. So what is the modern approach? Well, think about it. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to just evaluate people, right? And get rid of and sort of call out the poor performers? Or are you trying to improve, improve the em employee experience excuse me, improve the employee experience and thus performance and results. Well, of course, it's the B. Of course, the performance of your company is completely and directly linked to the performance of your people. That's what makes your company, right? If you take all the people out, there's, you know, the company can't operate itself, right? It's not a living, breathing organism. So, if you're not improving that performance and creating a great experience uh, for your employees within which they can thrive and really produce fantastic results and, and, and make your company more successful, then what are we doing? Um, a couple of weeks ago, Deloitte, uh, you know, Josh Burson's group at Deloitte, the, the Deloitte Global Human Capital Trend Survey was released. Uh, it's 2018, fresh show of the press, right? Brand new. Um, I love reading their uh, analyst reports. There's so much useful data to make our HR or AKA people operations of today so much better, making HR you all much more strategic in the way that you add value and impact your company um, and, and add value to your CEO and your executive team and your employees, right? I love reading their reports. And their latest one talks about sort of this process of ongoing modern continuous performance management. It's all about, you know, first bullet point and first piece here is setting agile goals. You know, the, the most popular system that, that is the most easy and effective to use is called OKRs. Google basically made it popular, but it's, it's really very similar to MBOs that you've heard about with a few quick uh, tweaks, like they're supposed to be transparent, not just known by the manager and the employee. Um, they create more accountability. They allow you to make alignment possible so that employees can actually align and connect to the top corporate goals easily, right? That's how the OKRs, agile goals work. It's fantastic, really easy to use, very popular. Every CEO wants to do it, right? It's, it's that popular. Um, but also it's about regular check-ins, right? That's another big thing that when you read the Deloitte report, that's what they talk about, right? And the multi-directional feedback and pulse surveys and development feedback and coaching, all of that is this one modern system. This is sort of the, the first introductory point here to what, and we'll talk about more on, 
on this topic, what this modern approach is. You see, it's very different, very, very different than just this annual review of like, hey, manager, submit notes, and we're going to sit down with an employee and then talk to them about their uh, review for the past 12 months and what happened 12 months ago, and then talk about their compensation and we'll check off the compliance box. You see, this is very, very different, right? Forrester, they talk about this. They say, going forward, employee performance will be transformed to deliver results using continuous methods and advanced technologies, right? So this continuous method to make it effective and efficient, you're going to use technology, right, to do this, right? It's not a manual process like some of the annual review has been done. The modern technologies that they're built, and by the way, this is not a product demo of my company, A Team Software, but that's exactly what we do. We are that technology that enables this to do this in a more effective, efficient, faster, easier, uh, more productive manner, right? So, um, and what is continuous? Let me clarify. Set of continuous progress check-ins, right? Not a one a year event, against your goals, right? You're checking in against the goals that this person has, and you're checking in frequently because you're trying to break up a bigger, say, quarterly goal or, or OKR objective. They're all synonymous. I use them completely synonymously. Um, without getting too academic and pedantic about you know precise definitions of goals versus objectives, et cetera. But, but they're all really kind of one and the same, generally speaking. And you want to break those up into smaller, shorter, lighter conversations, right? You don't want to, you know, you don't want to try to, to uh, look at a quarterly goal at the end of the quarter because you're going to find out about all kinds of problems a quarter too late. Right. So and Deloitte Burson research demonstrates that organizations with a continuous focus actually have better employee talent and business results. Right. It's better, you know, processes, better employee experience. No, you know, no wonder you're going to get better business performance and results. Going back to Donna Morris, she talked about uh, and educated a lot of HR leaders out there because she's one, she was on the forefront years ago in doing this effectively. And she said swapping out this like outdated annual review in favor of these regular check-ins allowed Adobe to have a lightweight process that served rather than distracted from its people in doing their best work. And that is some fantastic stuff. GE, let's look at them. GE is a, they've been around forever, right? Um, they've, they've really done a lot on the legacy performance review front, you know, with the, uh, remember the ratings and getting rid of the bottom uh, 10%, et cetera. But GE, right, the one organization you would never expect to do this. I mean, of course, you'd be like Adobe, you know, they're the leading edge and they're a modern organization and they're a technology company, big public company. Of course, they're high tech, so they're you know fast moving. They're you know always on the on the edge of the best of the best. But GE, well, guess what? Yes, they are. GE is moving toward continuous touch points between managers and employees, right? Uh, the executive at HR and G. And by the way, that is exactly what this is: continuous performance management. Listen. A lot of the old school annual reviews were done incorrectly because they were collapsing a bunch of different things all into one bucket. And that was what was proven to really be bad, right? All these statistics are a function of a number of problems that the old process was created for your organizations, right? One of the biggest ones, right? is throwing compensation into the mix. There is a ton of research and an emerging best practice that took place in the past decade that separated the conversation about compensation away from the reviews, right? Do the reviews, right? Do the, first of all, continuous check-ins based on goals, provide people coaching and feedback, and then when you do the review snapshots, which are sort of a micro annual review, but always based on the regular check-ins and the goals you set in the first place. Always, always, always. Not standalone review, but always directly built on top of a solid foundation of setting clear regular objectives, quarterly objectives, and regular weekly or bi-monthly, like, you know, twice a month check-ins, right, that provide that 
feedback and coaching and insight and and sort of the microcosm of these like reviews but then you have these what we call review snapshots that you can do you know every quarter or every four months therefore like three times a year or a lot of people do them twice a year but notice something it's not annual review done twice a year it's a different process altogether done twice a year right and um, that process, again, is based on goals and regular check-ins, so taking those touch points, weaving them together for that review snapshot that's a little bit more formal, right? Um, and, you know, twice a year means in the middle of the year and at the end of the year. And by the way, even if you do that at the end of the year, that's perfectly fine because that's not an annual review. That's just a review snapshot at the end of the year based on the continuous touch points throughout the year. That's very different right? But do not talk about compensation. Compensation, as you can see on this slide, is a completely separate thing altogether. They work together. First, you do the, you know, the agile management uh, with goals, which is OKRs, great system. Uh, by the way, if you want to learn more about OKRs, we can give you a free consultation on them. It's, you know, we have a, you know, a whole training on them, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we, you, know, you can go to our website and learn about OKRs. Simple stuff. Think of it as simply goals or objectives, right? And ongoing real-time check-ins, but they're separate from compensation. We can also tell you more about uh, at the end, like how you do compensation meetings separate. But this is truly the best practice. Do not combine them together. There's no reason to have it all in one meeting and separating them makes the world of difference. It's been proven. Also, not to read every point verbatim, and bug you down with it. But you know, the difference between traditional and modern primarily is it's not just purely led by HR like the annual reviewers. HR is a critical central catalyst that supports this process throughout the organization. But the process of doing performance management, remember, what is performance management? It's management. Well, who manages people? It's HR doesn't manage every person in the company directly. It's done by managers, right, who manage those people. So it should be localized. Management should be done by managers, but supported, enabled, right, by HR. That's a big difference. The other big difference is not for assessing and evaluating. And it's not for compliance, right? It's compliance will be a byproduct of doing continuous performance management, the modern approach correctly. It's a byproduct of that, and it will happen. But the main rationale for the continuous performance management, modern best practice is really all about employee experience, talent development, improving performance, enhancing performance, achieving stellar results. And it should be strategic, right? Means it li literally links to the company's top uh, goals so that everybody understands how they connect and how their work effort connects to what truly matters to the company. In fact, uh, Deloitte, a couple of years ago, said there are nine disruptive trends in HR. Disruptive. Disruptive. Not just like, hey, general trends, whatever. These are disrupting HR. They're making HR significantly better. They're turning HR on its head, right? Meaning that if you're an HR leader not doing this, you have to, right? This is how you can be a leading HR leader. You are truly having a seat at the table with your CEO, with your executive team to unlock that value of your employees. That is all the difference, right? That is all the difference. We are going to actually refer in a couple of slides to an article in Harvard Business Review about the disruption of the HR role. Right? It made waves, right? But this disruption, the first one on the list of nine, the first one, number one of nine, accelerating revolution of performance management. Deloitte didn't come out and say, hey, performance management is changing. You, you got to read up about it. Some good stuff here. No, 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 no. They said disruptive trend and accelerating the revolution. They used the word revolution. That's huge, right? If that's not sinking in, Think about it. Why did Deloitte call it revolution? It is that freaking big. It is that impactful on your company, on your HR career, on your job, 
on what you do to your company for your CEO, for your board, for your executives, for your employees. It is that huge. Deloitte also said it is the hottest and most disruptive area of HR, this redesign of performance management. And by the way, this is all happening now in the past few years. The, the, that train has left the station. So, so run towards that train train right don't be the last one on it right it's already left but it's still going like it's it's not too far away you still have time by the way more than 70 percent of the companies studied in deloitte's 2017 this is very recent global human capital trends research said that they're well on their way right they're well on that train to reinventing their performance management process internally. So that those statistics, those morbid statistics we saw earlier in this presentation do not end up impacting you and your company. These are all the companies, some of the world's best that have done it, right? So what's the right way to do continuous performance management? And, and Kathy, by the way, can we just do a super quick poll? And like, I'm just curious, like I'm talking about this, how many people uh, actually, are uh, transitioning away. Can you can you can you run that, or is that uh, is that poll possible to, yes, to open we up? We have launched the poll now. And can I continue while people are polling? I'm just curious. You, you can tell um, us. Well, right now they will just be seeing the poll, so we'll just leave it open a ah. few seconds, and then I'll close it off. Sure. And uh, would you so like you the results noticed... shared? Oh yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear the results. Okay. And we just saw the statistics that the Deloitte has surveyed a lot of company HR leaders um, and HR practitioners, right? And they said seventy percent said they're well on their way to reinventing. How many are here, right? So, you know, we would want to see something like seventy percent are already starting to do this, but only thirty are a little bit behind. And hopefully, this webinar will give you a gentle nudge to go ahead and start really upgrading your performance reprocess, performance management process. I'm hoping it's not more than 30%. I'm hoping it's not more than 30% because then you're outside of that. You're the outlier to the standard, the bell curve, the standard deviation curve that uh, was, was taken out of the survey from Deloitte. We would not want the majority of folks on this webinar to be in the, you know, uh, you know, in more than 30 percent but kathy where are we okay so we had 58 percent did not start yet 21 oh, percent no. well uh started recently and being do it for being doing it for more than one year are both at 21 percent oh no i wanted to see 30 percent, but we're seeing 58 that's almost twice that's not good um, let's get going. Let's get on that train, right? This is going to help your companies. Look at this article in Harvard Business Review a couple of years back, right? So strategic HR, right? It's not the old school HR anymore. The CEO wants to depend on the company's HR to achieve success, to create value, right? Businesses don't create value. People do. HR, or as it's known today, the new title of HR for a lot of uh, leading edge companies is people operations or vice president of people, director of people operations, right? Elevating HR requires totally redefining your work, right? Um, and businesses will benefit from better management of not just its financial resources, but its human ones, right? So it's HR in this article that should recommend ways to the CEO to Use and unlock the value of your people and human capital. And this is what this webinar is about. How do you unlock that value? And how do you bring this new best practice? And by the way, it's not even that new. It's been around for like at least the past decade and now really catching on that 70% of companies are already doing this, right? So you want to bring that to your CEO. What does the CEO want? Is everyone clear on their goals and how these Goals tied to the team department and corporate goals. Can we measure everyone's performance objectively? Um, is our organization getting the performance it needs from our employees and teams? Right? Can we use data to understand performance better and employee risks? That's what the CEO wants to know. That is what's being answered by the modern performance management. We talk about goals a lot. Let me just show you really quickly, just because visually, so you understand what I'm talking about. When I say goals, I don't mean just like you know, put some kind of an objective into some PowerPoint and shoot it off to someone who's never going to open it again. When I say modern goals, there's a concept of goal visualization, a chart. By the way, this is not an org chart. This is a goal alignment chart. It shows how 
each employee's or department's objective directly connects to the top organizational, big top objective, right, that the CEO knows about. And every person can see how their work impacts, right, directly the progress of the goal to which they align. It's amazing what this stuff does when you look at it visually and how everybody's truly tapped in and connected into the organizational goal system and seeing how their work impacts the company, right? It's no longer something hidden in some PowerPoint that you never look at again or that nobody sees because that goal chart, by the way, this goal chart, it's visible by everyone. It's transparent. And that transparency, some people don't realize how uh, transparency and alignment impact the company positively, right? People are truly on the same page, right? And they're really working towards the same result. Uh, and the CEOs love it, right? It's great. So there's more research from Gallup that combining goals and regular check-ins with feedback, not just goals by themselves, not just set a goal and forget it, right? This is not a set and forget thing. This is not management if that's what your managers do. But if you actually combine goals with regular check-ins, and I say that because a lot of companies I've seen, they put a goal in place for a year and they don't talk about it for an entire year. No, that doesn't work, right? That's 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 garbage. Throw that out, right? But if you combine it with regular check-ins for a few minutes a week, and I'll show you what a check-in looks like, and with feedback, right, and coaching, right, that actually does increase performance. Well, of course, right? If you just set and forget, of course, that doesn't do anything. There's survey results in a recent article uh, on hrdive.com that 94% of employees actually really want that managers do these regular, quick, you know, five to 10 minute weekly check-ins, right? These kind of like these one-on-ones about the goals and the bottlenecks and kind of some coaching. Um, and the coaching can take more time, but the check-in itself um, on the goal metrics and quick, you know, check-up is, is very quick. People want that. They don't want the once a year thing. They don't want the once a year thing uh, repeated twice a year, right? They want a different process. The check-in is a different process. How does it work, right? Progress check-ins every quarter, you do it like every week or every two weeks. You know, we have some customers, very large organizations globally, um, you know, multi-billion dollar public companies that prefer their managers just do it once a month. I think it should be done more frequently, but for some really large companies, that's what works and that's fine. But this is a one-on-one -on -one check in sync up, right? The manager's offers help to the employee to overcome roadblocks, uh, provides constructive strengths-based feedback, coaching, um, discusses the other key sort of regular, you know, day-to-day -day type topics, right? But it's all about like, what are your goals in the first place, right? Because if you don't have goals, that's not effective management at all, right? That's just, that's wrong, right? That should not be permitted. Right. That's what managers are hired for. Manage with objectives. Uh, otherwise, they're going to end up micromanaging with tasks and, and little activities day to day rather than clear objectives. This is what a check in looks like. That's our product. But generally speaking, you have objectives. You know, Dion Lewis reports to Jack Smith, uh, the CEO over here, you know, checks in on the progress. At this point in time, you're in the green. Um, you know, we do these colored progress bars. Um, you know, the, the manager can say, hey, good job on this. That's great. Um, you know, you can be asked a couple of qualitative questions to combine with goal metrics to understand greater depth of work. Um, you know, any bottlenecks or obstacles happening to you, anything else you want to share with me, any great wins or, or small wins that you want to share that happened this week or the past two weeks that you're really proud of um, that I can, you know, share with others. It's things like that that you do this check-in. takes five to ten minutes. Easy, right? And what is feedback? Well, you all know the general standard feedback. You request feedback, you give feedback. But on top of that, to make HR truly strategic, the right modern feedback that's part of the continuous performance management process, just if it has to link back to core values of the company. It's one of the additional features of the modern feedback of taking uh, a corporate value, like you have the core values here. And when somebody exemplifies this, you, you tell them that, and they get that feedback and others can see it. Um, let me give you another key insight in doing the modern continuous performance management. We talked about it earlier when we when we juxtaposed the, the old and the new, right? It must be localized, right, to the managers. It's owned locally by the manager, but supported and powered and ultimately even administered in a good way by HR, right? HR sort of um, does the hand-holding, right? But managers manage, right? And that's when HR gets the best information that's valuable to 
all around employees, HR managers, and obviously the CEO and the executive team who are, who'll be much more satisfied with the process. Now your managers can start meetings with goals, right? So meetings are no longer empty and vacuous. They're actually about what really matters and what's linked to the, to the company. What were the objectives? How is the progress towards the objectives? So one-on-one -on -one meetings are like that. Team meetings are like that. They're more structured around what matters to the company and aligned, right? Managers can also, you're enabling in HR, your managers to identify problems early on, right? Not wait until the end of the year or not wait until six months later. By these regular check-ins, you and HR are enabling your managers to be much more effective as managers of that 70% that you're spending on your people every year. So you are truly, whether your title is, um, you know, in HR, you know, you're, you're an HR manager or an HR practitioner, you really are doing people operations, right? It's more than just simply HR. It's actually in doing something extremely positive and very, very impactful on your entire company, for your shareholders, for your executives, for your CEOs, for your managers, for employers. You're making your managers much more effective and efficient at their job. And for many companies, it's the first time ever that that is starting to happen in a more formal, organized, codified manner. The five steps overarchingly to summarize is really, you know, agile goals, regular check-ins, you know, quick five to 10 minute check-ins. It's amazing what will happen when these touch points are starting to weave together from week to week, month to month, quarter to quarter, and towards the end of the year, right? The feedback and coaching that's happening because the managers are in real time able to assess how things are going, provide that recognition, right? Remember on the, on the check-in report, I even showed you, there's like a button where the manager says, good job, right? How many times do people get recognized for their good work? Statistics show almost never. It's real, right? There's actually Harvard Business Review statistics uh, from two years ago that uh, employees complain very vividly that they're not getting any recognition for good work, but it's enabled through the, the, what what, uh, what uh, Forrester Research said in one of the slides, a new modern advanced technologies, right? You click on a recognition button and the employee sees it, right? Even if the manager is too busy to voice it in person, uh, but technology helps. And then those review snapshots, which previously um, were known as annual reviews, well, it's a review snapshot that's founded on these check-ins and the goals and, and this kind of regular period uh, rhythm, uh, this recognition, this check-ins that happen from week to week, right? And then you have a review snapshot. It's not just a once a year annual uh, review, right? These are per periodic. Um, best practices for successful implementation. Just let's run through this quickly because we have 12 minutes left. Um, it has to be localized. We talked about it. You have to set goals like OKRs and OKRs. Definitely highly recommend you embrace it because, you know, Google and tons of great companies are using OKRs. They're just the most effective and the most written about system today, just hands down, right? But you got to have your manager set objectives and link them to, to the CEO's objectives. Every CEO loves it. When the company actually runs by objectives, they take a, you know, they, 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 they take a ton of pride when their companies like that. And when the, the HR department, the HR leaders, help make that happen. When they empower that and facilitate that process, that is incredibly powerful. That is exactly what that uh, Harvard Business Review article a couple of slides ago talked about, the strategic HR, right? Strategic HR pr practitioner and strategic chief uh, HR officer or people ops or VP of uh, people ops, that's what strategic HR is about, right? That's where you unlock the value for the company. That's when you impact your business truly positively and have the seat at the table with the other executives in a way that hasn't happened ever before, in a way that actually amplifies the value of your employees uh, at your company and increases the performance and the results, which is what the CEO truly ultimately cares about. Uh, managers and employees also must do check-ins regularly. If you enable it with software, such as our software, for example, a team software, um, you facilitate to make it super simple, uh, easy. It's There's automated notifications, you know, things like if you have Slack, you can get Slack notifications, email notifications. You come in, you check in quickly. The manager sees there's dashboards, visual, colorful. 
it's amazing, right? People can really feel their impact on the business. And finally, you're supposed to focus on improving performance, not simply doing appraisal and that's it, right? Mistakes to avoid, you know, doing continuous performance management irregularly and not frequently. That's, that's, that's not continuous. How about making managers and employees use a traditional HR system, the big bloated old school system to log in and do their performance management? Uh-uh. None of your managers or employees will like that. They're not built from the ground up for the right experience of managers and employees. They are built well for HR, but HR asking managers and employees to use an HR focused uh, software is just something that's gonna be meant for failure, right? It's gonna fail, dead in the water. Three, dropping the annual review completely. Well, note that even though it doesn't work standalone, right, I said that earlier, uh, doing something at the end of the year or twice a year, but only when founded in these continuous check-ins is the right way to go, right? So get rid of the annual review the way you've been doing it, but don't just completely not do a review snapshot at the end of the year. It's just done differently. It weaves together all the continuous touch points, right? It's based on that system that I shared with you earlier. It's different from just a standalone once a year review uh, and nothing else, right? Um, and a quick facelift to your legacy annual review process will make things better. Nope, that's a mistake. Avoid it. A quick facelift just doesn't work. That's not what it's about. It's a different process, and I showed you the five steps earlier. Um, the three big myths, that performance management doesn't matter. I heard one HR practitioner ultimately say, hey, it doesn't matter. Like, we have good managers. They know what they're doing. Oh, my God. Uh, and I'll show you in the next slide coming from one of the leading uh, experts and thought leaders in this area, what they say about performance management. Um, also, performance management is just an HR problem. No, it's not. It's a problem for the CEO, for the management team as a whole, for every manager. And it shouldn't be a problem. It should be a solution to make management more effective. Oh, and managers don't care about performance management. No, that's a myth. Yes, they do. When it's done right, they love it because that helps them do their job more effectively. And it's a tool that's very powerful. So, um, you know, th this is written by one of the, you know, top thought leaders in the space um, in a book. And he said, is performance management really that important? It is, and he said, the most powerful tool an organization has to ensure the achievement of strategic goals, again, strategic, right? To focus the energy of the organization members on the achievement of its mission, reinforce the importance of everyone's living up to the company's vision and values. It's the most powerful tool an organization has. So with that said, and uh, Kathy, I think we're, you know, we're meeting the objective of finishing a little bit earlier. You said you wanted you know, five minutes before the end of the hour. So if you want free live demo of how, for example, our product works, and you know this, this webinar is not about a demo, but if you want one to see how continuous ma performance management technology actually works, um, what the best practices are, the learnings we've seen from uh, you know, thousands of users globally that you know, show us what people like, what people don't like, how it can help your organization, or case studies, or free consultation on the process, we're even setting OKR goals in the first place, free consultation on that. Uh, and by the way, this will not be like, hey, free consultation means a product demo. No, it's not. We give you real valuable insights like you've seen in this webinar, exactly on goal setting and OKRs. Or free copy of this presentation or free eBooks and e-guys on these topic areas that will help you be that strategic HR practitioner. Not the old school legacy HR, but the modern, highly valued, truly organizationally strategic HR practitioner, whether you're uh, starting a career in HR, or you're you know chief HR officer, whatever it is, we have something for you that you'll really appreciate and and find useful. Just send an email with a subject line. Uh, subject line should say hi to cdemo.team.com, and uh, one of my team members will follow up and get you anything you want of this menu. Literally, just email cdemo.team.com. You say hi in the subject line and send. That's it. And it will magically get back to you. And with that said, um, Kathy, are there any questions we have here in the next few minutes? Uh, or should we yes. just take them? At yeah, go ahead, please. We do have a few questions, and we do have a couple of minutes. So uh, first off, we have the question, what does OKR stand for? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have defined it earlier. It stands for objectives and key results. It just 
it's a if you if you uh, go to our website ateam.com, you learn more about OKRs. There's an introductory page and ebooks on it, but it's really think of it as just simply objectives. In fact, I'll be the first to admit to you, it's pretty much the same as MBOs. You know, the objectives a lot of companies have referred to in the past, or really just goals. Um, if you call them KPIs, key performance indicators. The truth is they're all the same thing. Some people call them smart goals, specific, measure, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-based. It's all one and the same. It's goals, objectives. But the OKRs, objectives, and key results are super popular today. Google made them popular. They are written about in that book, Work Rules, by uh, Lasso Bach. Uh, so that that's the answer. By the way, I was going to say uh, the first person who sends us an email saying, hi we'll win that book work rules we'll get it for you on amazon and ship it over to you or get you an amazon gift certificate to buy it whichever one you prefer so uh i told you if i'm in a good mood i'll give one away later so the first person all right so uh kathy any other questions we can help with today yes so a lot of people are saying hi now <laughs> but other than that um so we have a question <laughs> i know what top down goals are Please explain the meaning of developing goals from the bottom up. Ah, great question. Top down is when the manager comes to you and says, this is your goal, go do it. Bottom up does not mean that the employee just sets their own goals and runs with it. No, bottom up actually uh, correctly, uh, correctly means that the employee works with the manager to set clearly what they believe the goals should be based on a conversation with the manager. And the manager, listen, this is all about tapping into the collective wisdom of your team. If you have smart people that you hire, they should be experienced enough. Even if they're junior, they will have some idea, but it's probably more about slightly less junior people to suggest what they can focus on at the end of the quarter. But the manager, of course, you know, has the right to veto it, approve it, et cetera. But it's basically all much more about the, the employee proposing based on their experience and, and understanding of their job and effectiveness what those objectives are but of course the manager as the leader should review and, and approve right perfect thank you um we have time for one last question how Let's do, do you address resistance from managers Resistance, you know what? I've actually not heard that there's a ton of resistance from managers on employing this type of system because managers typically anyway do, or at least good managers, regular check-ins with their employees. They're just doing it uh, manually, um, kind of meeting with them, you know, face-to-face -face or um, doing it in a way that doesn't capture the progress on objectives in a centralized system. Um, but any tool that makes the manager more effective is typically welcomed. If you do have some resistance, maybe you ask this question because it's rooted in something you've experienced in the organization. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it, first question is, is this person even a good manager? If they're, if they're resisting doing a best practice of, of managing effectively, that, you know, you really have to ask that question quite honestly. And a lot of managers are not as effective as we want them to be. Um, the second thing is just, you know, do they really understand what they're resisting? I mean, they're resisting something that will save them a ton of time, you know, make uh, something more enabled by technology, simplify their life, uh, you know, centralize their ability to see from one pane of glass how their employees are doing towards objectives. You know, if once they understand that, it's not likely they would resist it. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, and then, you know, I just want to thank everyone for joining us on this webinar today. I hopefully I hope it was useful and, and educational and, and, and edifying and hopefully entertaining as well. Um, and then uh, Kathy, I want to thank you and HR.com and now I want to turn it back over to you. Well, thank you so much to Zorian Rotenberg of A Team for presenting this very informative webcast today. Just a few reminders for the attendees. If you would like to view this webcast again, the archive recording will be available for up to seven days for our free members and unlimited for our recertification members. Slides are also available to download. Your webcast credits are stored in your hr.com account. Watch for your email to arrive within one to two business days. It will contain the certification credit information. Your feedback is important to us. Please take a moment and fill out the exit survey that will appear on your screen. 
This concludes our webcast. Enjoy the rest of your day.